Hi, I am Balaji Chepada and welcome back to my channel. In continuation of our Python series for data science, in today's video, we will talk about data types. Just like any other programming language in like C, C++ or JavaScript, Python do have a wide variety of data types and we will explore each and every one of them individually. If you haven't checked out our previous videos, please do watch them under the playlist Python for data science. So without getting any delay, let's get started. So as you already know, Python is a dynamic programming language, which means that you don't need to explicitly define or declare your data type of each variable. If you are familiar with C, you say something like int a equal to 10. This means you are saying there is a variable called a and you assign a value 10 and the data type of this 10 is integer. Here you are specifically mentioning the data type of a variable before assigning any value to it. This is what uh, explicit declaration means. In Python, you don't need to declare the data type of variables explicitly because Python will understand what you are typing or what you are giving to a variable and it will assign the data type accordingly. And just like any other programming language, Python has several inbuilt data types and some of the commonly used ones are uh, numeric data types, sequential data types, mapping, set types, boolean types and none types. In numeric, we have integer, float and complex data types. Usually even boolean also comes under numeric data types because boolean is basically either 0 or 1. 0 is for false and 1 is for true. But we will understand boolean separately in detail as well. Now let's go and understand the data types in Python. If you see this here, I am assigning a value of 5 which is an integer to a variable a. But nowhere in the code I haven't mentioned anything about what data type the 5 is, either integer or float or it could be. And Python also offers a function called type in which you pass the variable that you have declared and it will print out what type of data type it is. If you see, 5 is a type of class integer. This is the beauty of Python. You don't need to explicitly declare the data type of the variables by default. Sometimes it might be a little bit confusing if you are doing a lot of coding, but I think it's better like this way compared to declaring explicitly. And if I say a equal to 2.5 here, 2.5 is a float. What is a float? Float value is basically any value other than integers like decimals, fractions, all of these comes under float category. 5 is an integer because it is, there are no decimals. And let's say if I do 5.0 and if I say print the type of A, it will be treated as float because there are decimals present inside the data set, inside the number actually. If A equal to 2.5 and I haven't declared the type of A as float anywhere, but if I check the type of A, by default it is taking class float because Python understands what you are passing through a variable. And I can even give complex data types as well. If you don't know the complex numbers, you can just Google out complex numbers and you can read it out. But whenever you have something like this format, it is considered as a complex number. And if I give A, and it says is a complex number. And there is one more function called ease instance. What is ease instance? Ease instance is basically cross-checking the data type of the variable whether it's a complex or not now let's do something like this let's say is instance 1 plus 2 j it's a complex number but if i say is instance int it will return whether it's true or false it will return as false you can use this is instance uh, for cross-checking the data types as well for any do you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section below so we have integer data types we have float data types and then we have complex data types. We also have boolean but we will understand boolean in the later parts of this video. That's how the data types works, numeric data types works in python. Now let's talk about string. Strings are one of the data types in python and strings are basically a sequence of characters that are enclosed in either single quotes or double quotes or triple quotes. And you have to save them in a variable. Strings are one of the fundamental data types in Python that provides a rich set of operations and methods. We will understand all of those operations and methods in detail. So 
now we have single quoted is a variable name and we are passing hello world inside it inside single quotations now let's execute this it is given as a class string what if i give multiple quotes or double quotes and let's execute this it is also considered as a string and what if it is in triple quotes it is also considered as a string right and you can have anything inside a string python will have will not throw you any errors let's say i pass 1 plus 2j the complex number inside a string but the python will consider all of this as a string because it is enclosed under a single quotations or it, it could be double dual quotations or triple quotations this is how you define a string what if i want to define or declare a multi-line string you just need to use the quotes and then write your multi-line string let me print this out you see this is a multi-line string and one thing if you notice i haven't provided this backslash this is not a statement and because it is not a statement we don't need this backslash at the end of the string now what if i give a backslash at the end of each line now let's execute see this is a multi-line string it will work even without a backslash but it will work even with backslash that is the beauty of python and what is string indexing this is an important concept let's understand so we have a string called python p y t h o n this is marked as a python how do you access elements inside a string so python by default has some indexing rules let's understand so first the first character of a string or at least it could be anything is marked as index 0 and this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 this is indexing we are indexing the string with the numbers now whenever you call or you check your string with the indexing you get the corresponding element so let's say this is stored in string 1 now if i say string 1 of this is 0 that means what it will return is it will return this element because the 0 index is for the element p string 1 of 0 equal to p what if string 1 of 3 it will return h because it is indexed for the element h that's how you do string indexing now let's execute this code Okay, now let's understand the output. This is important. If you see Python and it will 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the first, we have string of 0 and we get P as an output without any issues. That's right. String of 2, which is T. So we got the output. And we are trying to request my string of 20, but there is no element for the index 20, right? Because the total number of elements are 6 no element for the index 20 so what python gives you is an error index error string index is out of range what it is saying is there you are trying to request for the element for the index which is not present in the input that's how easy it is to understand or debug issues in python it is very easy to learn and it's very beginner friendly as well so you give me a minute so you need to make sure you are passing the correct index when you are doing string indexing in python any queries so far please let me know in the comment section below now the next important thing is string slicing let's understand what is string slicing as the name suggests uh, let's say we have python p y t h o n and we are giving an index as 0 1 2 3 4 5 in the first part we learned how to access each element via with the index right now what if i want to access multiple elements within a set of or range of index now that is what string slicing means here we are saying one is one to four so the syntax is one is to four that means the starting element should be 1 and ending element should be 4 and 
the element num index 4 is not included not included so now let's understand this is the start position and this is an end position now what is the value for the index 1 which is y and we are saying get all the values from index 1 to index 4 which is 0 and we are saying 0 is not included and we will get y th as an output now let's execute this right now let's try and do my string index and let's say 2 to 5 let's execute and you get tho and element for the index 5 is not included and what if i say print my string 2 to minus 1 let's execute tho so what is minus 1 means so what is minus 1 means it is saying from the index 2 from the index 2 return all the elements until the last element that's what a minus 1 means hope that is clear right i have delete all of this and any doubts in the string indexing please let me know now another thing is string concatenation now what is a concatenation concatenation is basically addition so in the string 1 we said hello and string 2 we said world how do you concatenate two strings string 1 plus string 2 that, that is how easy it is to concatenate now let's execute this hello world now what if i added a comma in between you don't need to add the comma as well now what if i say string 3 equal to str3 equal to 10 it is an integer right str3 equal to 10 is an integer right so can i concatenate strings with an integer let's check it out plus str3 let's understand what this python gives if you see type error python by default understood that string 1 and string 2 are strings but string 3 is a variable in which we stored an integer value and you cannot concatenate different data types that is what the error is you can only concatenate string not integer to string it is very easy to debug guys that's what i'm stressing out python is a very easy language and even issues in python is very easy to debug now there are multiple methods in strings that will help you in your workflows now let's understand all of those so we have a value called hello world yes now what if i want to count how many words are present inside my string that is where we have this function or method length length of string you can print this and it will return the number of elements that are present inside your string now let's execute okay now let's execute here i'm getting 21 but let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then 7 8 9 10 11 12 there are only 12 elements but how come you got 21 it's because inside your string definition you have spaces as well each of these space will be counted as an element now what if i remove these spaces and if i say print length of my string it is 13 along with this space so you need to make sure you understand what the length returns it returns all the length of all the elements inside your string along with the spaces hopefully that is clear now let's understand dot lower dot lower so as the name suggests you have a string in a parameter called or variable called my string what if you want to convert all of these words into lower cases and what if you want to convert all of them into upper cases so you have two methods which is dot lower and dot upper now let's print this 
if you see every word is converted into their lower case and if i say dot upper and everything is converted into upper case that's how easy it is my string dot replace so what does this do as the name suggests we are replacing all the values of o with the value star now let's print hello world if you see the value of o is converted into the star because we are replacing the values with o with star and it replaces for the entire string now let's talk about my string dot strip method so what it does is it will remove any leading or tailing white spaces if i execute this right now i will get the same as my input because there are no leading spaces now what if i do like this and now first let's print my string and then let's print my string dot strip as well if you see when i do print my string it is printing all the white spaces leading and tailing as well but if i do print my string dot strip it removed those leading and tailing white spaces that is why we need to use my string dot strip and one more thing called my print my string dot split as the name suggests it will split and it let's say i want to split my string with this word or with this element if i do print it is splitting my string into multiple words which is hello and another one is word with the spaces as well so that is why we need to use split if you want to split with a space you can use the space as well and if i execute this it is giving you a lot of empty ones because all of these spaces it is splitting into multiple segments that is where all of these string methods are useful if you have any queries so far, please let me know in the comment section below. That's all for this video and hopefully you learned something new in this video regarding data types in Python which are numeric data types and also strings and their methods in Python. If you are liking what you are watching, please hit the subscribe button and click that bell icon to get notified daily and we will meet you in the next video. See ya, bye bye.